初に60分ほど学位論文の内容についてあの本人が説明しますでその後にあの自由に特にあの時間制限も設けませんから納得するまでいろいろ質疑応答を行いますあのどんどん質問してください、まあ、あの途中で60分も話すので途中であの適当あの質問していただいていいですではあの、えー、ダーテルの題目は、えー、ダイナミクスとアプルコンアトマイズングビジネスですでは説明ですアンソーチ
uh, non-dimensionless number including dynamics which measures uh, also ratio of uh, vis viscous inertia and surface tension forces and it's used a lot for uh, droplets and this kind of thing. So in this space uh, they some researchers or <coughs> experiments uh, they developed this four regions Rayleigh regime, the first wind induced regime, second wind induced regime and atomization regime. So we will focus on the last one, the atomization regime, which is the fastest and it's the uh, the most optimized or with most breakup that you can think, uh, just to have an idea. So this is the basic and uh, definition of the uh, setting of the problem. Like we, we think of a nozzle which has some uh, outer exit diameter and some input variable. So nozzle input parameters you can take the some pressure, input pressure, uh, velocity, uh, density, and then we want to calculate the same quantities but at some distance from the nozzle for a statistically stationary uh, state of the jet. And uh, the, the geometry, or taking it in a simplified geometry, this has uh, an angle of the jet, and so this is what we'll be thinking, and some distance, axial distance. Uh, think of maybe cylindrical coordinates here. So we think, just to have an idea, uh, above uh, 30 meters per second uh, of the velocity, output velocity, and a diameter of about or one millimeter, and for a pressure atomized liquid jet system. This is the kind of jet that we try to model. Um, a particular phenomenon is the gas entrainment, <coughs> which is the when gas, uh, the surrounding gas, uh, enters and combines with the droplets that have break, broken up. And so this process is the gas entrainment and the rate of the mass flux, how much kilograms per second per unit area, this is the uh, gas entrainment rate. And this is one another objective of, our, of the work that we could uh, derive theoretically. Uh, so uh, for the gas entrainment rate, why was it important? Uh, there are formulas derived for it from dimension analysis. This is from experiments or from theory, but just from analyzing the, the physics or the units. And they arrive to some fitting curves, for example. Uh, one very famous one is quite old. It's uh, from dimensional analysis, and it's used in several papers. The last one I found was some 2000, early 2000. So, it's been modified a little bit. Originally it was for gas, but it's used for atomizing jets also for, without very little modification. So far as we know, there is no theoretical derivation of it other than the one we present here. And this was one of the objectives. And our formula generalizes this original definition of uh, Riton and Spalding uh, and gives an, some understanding of where it comes from. And uh, also reduces to the constant produced or proposed by them uh, under some approximation for large distances from the nozzle or far field. So we also give a new approximation for the near field of this uh, gas entrain. So other people have been, uh, also made uh, mathematical models, which is our focus, uh, for different aspects of this atomizing jet. So uh, for example, just to mention a few because of course, there are more than this, uh, but the ones I found that are closest to our approach is, uh, for example, for a transient state, uh, unsteady, uh, several other authors uh, developed this for the jet tip penetration. This is the distance that the jet uh, will tip or outermost uh, droplets travel uh, with time. So this is the jet tip <coughs> penetration, uh, distance versus time function. And so some people develop some mathematical models for this. Uh, the gas entrainment rate, the stationary, in the stationary state, also has been developed, but uh, we found that it has a very complicated model, the one that we could find, and has many parameters and difficult to measure in experiment. So in practical terms, uh, the equations cannot be used to uh, predict or to model a, a real life process. So this is one disadvantage. And the induced air velocity uh, is another characteristic that has been modeled before by some other authors. And this is uh, 
the research we could find is for low speed, for example, different geometries, flat or fan sprays, and also two phase flow, which means that um, it's another consideration, maybe lower speed, because the droplets and the gas phase do not move at the same speed. So this means like uh, they are considered separate. We will see that we will consider them to be a single one, like a composite uh, fluid. So there are some details in the discussion of the pieces also and why these are good for certain cases and why in some other cases they are not enough and why we have to propose something new. So the advantages of uh, the models uh, I propose here are that uh, if they have very few parameters, uh, one or uh, probably or up to three parameters, and they can be estimated experimentally, uh, for example, the angle, this is, uh, there are many ways there. Not a, this is an interesting point because there's not a single way to uh, measure the angle. So there are many definitions of it, but anyway, it can be measured uh, experimentally. We also calculate the dynamic pressure of the jet. Uh, this is not this is not the first, but this is not very common in other models. And uh, we tested it to work on certain parameter ranges. It's still unprecise. Actually, this is, I think, the weakest point, I must say, of the work so far, that we need uh, experimental data to validate uh, these models and to see which one is better in which case and why, as we'll discuss. We theoretically derived uh, some known empirical dimensional analysis result, as I mentioned, the gas increment rate. And uh, we uh, derived uh, several models, uh, related similar ones, uh, with analytical explicit, analytical implicit, and numerical solutions uh, with different grades of accuracy, and also different uh, grades of uh, explanation power or interpretation power, which uh, we can see from the resulting solutions. Uh, just to compare all, all the uh, different models, here I put uh, five. So in the vertical axis, we can see that if we go up, we have more theoretical understanding or explanatory capability. We can think of it like that. And uh, if we go down, we uh, go to a little bit more prediction power and accuracy. In uh, at the loss of the first. So they, they, we have to balance both in the set of models we have. So the first one is the uh, the most, I think this is the previous one or most elegant, elegant one, one at least I, I like because we like explicit analytical solutions uh, which we can see and understand and make a limit and make some approximation and then this gives us some physical meaning. So this is the ideal momentum jet. Uh, and this is, I think, the, uh, for the same reason, the one that is closest to some other models that were before, but none developed uh, up to where we have developed here. So uh, next step is ideal power jet. This is similar to the last one, but it uses the en energy approach. We'll discuss briefly. And then we uh, uh, make other set of assumptions which become a little bit more realistic in the process to uh, the kind of jet we want to do, but at the same time, we lose this uh, uh, interpretation or explanation power, but it gets to be more accurate. The last one, the Bahrain velocity power jet with liquid only mass loss, I call it like this. Uh, this is, uh, it has, uh, it's only numerical, so you cannot see the solutions until you do the run the scheme, uh, but it's more precise. Uh, up to where we have been able to measure. Uh, we need more, as I told you, for some other ranges to see where, where we can use this. Um, okay, this is why we made several ones. Uh, so I'll, I'll explain a little bit more in detail the first one, the momentum approach. The other ones are related, and you can see the detail if you're interested also in the text. So uh, the, the basic idea is to part from conservation laws. So the first model uses momentum conservation, momentum flux, and also mass conservation, mass flux. And so the momentum we calculate, you can think of Lagrangian approach, which is uh, moving with, and this is how this is explained by the way, moving, uh, taking a fluid parcel uh, as it comes out of the nozzle and kind of uh, idealized parcel and 
tracking its uh, movement through the flight of the gem. So this is one way, and the other one is just to fix your frame of reference, and this is an Eulerian approach, where we will have uh, some rate, some uh, maybe mass penetrating some uh, fixed distance, or some mass flux or energy flux, as we will see later. So the momentum, you know, is mass times velocity. The mass is just the volume times the density, and we make uh, time uh, distance equal velocity per time. So this is a very simple thing. The Bernoulli principle, the, uh, which relates uh, for a streamline, for example, the uh, energy, in this case, we can use an approximation. So this is not uh, the uh, whole thing, but if we neglect the dynamic uh, pressure inside the nozzle, because it moves very slowly compared to outside, so this is the expression we get for the output velocity. Maybe I should mention that many outputs put a constant right here, because uh, in real um, conditions, this is not exact. So we get a constant to uh, account for that. So but if we substitute this into the some momentum flux uh, here at some, for some uh, at the nozzle, we get this expression. Here we should say pi is the momentum, this is the uh, derivative with respect to time, and the small pi is pi constant, of course. D, large D, is the diameter. The quantities that have zero are uh, to be in the initial position or at the nozzle, which is just liquid, or just, uh, you can think water or fuel or some other uh, liquid. And T is the density, I'm, I'm sorry, the rho is the density, P is the pressure inside the nozzle uh, for a pressure at my jet. And uh, this is the initial one. So we calculate the same thing uh, at some distance. So the assumption is that we have a two-phase fluid. This is uh, two different fluids, uh, in mostly liquid and gas. And the, they are in dynamic equilibrium. This means, as I said before, that they have had uh, enough uh, time mm -hmm. and space to have an exchange and to reach an equilibrium in their momentum. So this uh, translates to them having the same speed. And they move as a single fluid with a composite density. So, well, this is what I see. It, it has a varying density. Sometimes they have a liquid fraction. Also, you can find it as this. Uh, and it depends on the distance uh, from the nozzle, of course. And uh, we assume first total conservation of momentum. And I stress here total because in the following uh, model, actually I relax this, uh, uh, um, this assumption and just assume that some portion of the momentum or some portion of the energy is conserved. Because uh, there are losses and the process is complex, I should stress that uh, this is for a turbulent uh, jet, and this kind of model is difficult that, uh, or there aren't many models with this kind of approach that are uh, useful. So this is uh, a little bit surprising that it could actually fit or do well to fit the experiments and explain what is happening. So uh, we get a simple expression also for the momentum flux at some distance, uh, and by equating both by conservation of momentum, we can get uh, uh, also an equation which relates the velocity and the density of the jet. Remember this is the velocity of the composite fluid, right? And the density is also not the density of the liquid or gas, but some uh, measure of the fraction of liquid and gas, right? So uh, by geometrical uh, uh, consideration, we can also calculate this entrainment rate, of, in this case, it's volumetric entrainment rate, uh, just by a sub difference, mainly of the uh, total volume of the jet uh, and the original volume of the liquid, which must be preserved as it travels. So this is actually conservation of mass uh, in some uh, some way. So this is. Uh, and by the geometry which we fix, idealized geometry which we fix the angle, uh, we have this uh, very simple trigonometrical expression. Also, the composite density of the two phase fluid is uh, all in the simplest way possible we can think it's uh, mass and volume. 
the only key point or tricky point is here is how to put these rates and the from the original uh, well time independent rates that we found before. But if we substitute from before from the calculation, we can get this also mass conservation equation, which also has as an unknown, I mark the density and the velocity of, of the fluid. The rest are known quantities or parameters parameters of the uh, of the model. And uh, this is all dependent on the axial distance. It's not shown here the dependency, but they all are uh, dependent on parentheses uh, x, right, the distance. And, uh, well, particular this and this. Okay, so by, by using this system of two nonlinear equations, actually, uh, we were, it's fortunate that we can uh, eliminate even though they are nonlinear equations, we can eliminate one of the two variables, and uh, and we get uh, some uh, analytic explicit solution for the velocity. This is written in dimensionless uh, quantities, which is, uh, for example, all the quantities that have hat are are dimensionless. The velocity is divided by the initial velocity, the diameter also by the nozzle exit diameter, and the density by the liquid density, and so on. So this is just to simplify the analysis. And while well, you can uh, get a nice equation after some representative calculations, and uh, uh, in the same way we can eliminate the, velo the velocity from the same system and have an equation for the density. This is also an ex analytical explicit solution that depends on the distance through this d. Actually, d is the one that depends on the distance, and uh, it has this uh, tangent term. Of the just by the angle of the jet. Uh, here it looks uh, simple because I arrange it like this to look, how you say, elegant, look like uh, has some explanation or some uh, nice shape, the simplest way I could, I could say. And uh, this one doesn't have, or I do not think, that's an uh, explanation or physical explanation directly, but it's useful for uh, writing the expression. Uh, but Combining both, we can get also the expression for the dynamical dynamic pressure, because we have both solutions in this case. This is one of the advantage of this model that we can write the, the, the solutions explicitly, including the dynamic pressure. And we also get some simple expression. And they all depend on the distance by this uh, simple relationship. Uh, and they are nice in, in not in dimensionless form. So with this, we uh, apply this uh, result to the gas entrainment rate coefficient. The coefficient is defined like this. You can see that it's a, a rate of the entrained mass uh, per unit distance. So this is a derivative. And it's uh, but actually in their experiment. This is a more modern definition. The original one it was constant, or just a, a fraction, fraction of the ratio of uh, the quantity. And uh, it was used as a constant for the slope or some of some uh, fitting. This is the original uh, definition by Riefen and Spalding. This is actually not the original from Riefen and Spalding. This is a little bit more. But other than that, it's the same. And uh, it has these uh, uh, ratios also, as you can see, that are kind of dimensionless expressions for this. So. This is the definition, and we try to, we apply what we obtain to this uh, uh, equation here, and we get, uh, for example, by using the the equation before, also some mass entrainment, and we can calculate this expression uh, by taking the derivative. We can calculate this and arranging the terms to uh, calculate the the coefficient as it is defined. We get this expression. So this expression depends on V, and, uh, uh, which is the distance. And in this sense, it is uh, uh, more general than the original expression, which was a constant, as I mentioned. And uh, this is uh, also this is dimensional, dimensional form, but it includes some dimensionless terms here, the, the quotient of the whole distance. Uh, so from this, we can is that we calculate the far field approximation and the near field approximation. So, 
taking some limits, for example, for z equals 0, v, v equal 1, and rho equal 1, which is to be expected. This is at the nozzle. We expect the velocity to be the original velocity and the density to be the density of liquid. This is a consistency check that I did in all the cases to check that the resulting equations are have meaning with the physical expectation, at least in the most basic thing. And then we can, if this is confirmed to be true, if it's consistent, then we can generalize or do some other uh, uh, interpretation or um, some other calculation. So from this, uh, for example, for the near field, we get this expression. And for the far field, we get this other expression, which is uh, just uh, the tangent of the angle, two times tangent of the angle, very simple. And then we can relate to, because there are many experiments that have related both, and say, for example, uh, that what we prove uh, later, that is that the near field, uh, uh, in the near field, the increment rate is less than the, than the far field. So I prove here by just uh, some uh, inequalities, for example, and as a small theorem, that this is, uh, uh, this is actually true by the definitions of the model. So in this way, uh, the formula that we present here achieves a generalization of the empirical one and provides a theoretical account for it, one of the achievements. So we make some special cases, which is uh, also to check with known solutions and also to uh, verify that this is, uh, as, I, as I tell you, consistent with the expectation. So, for example, the simplest case is no breakup. What happens when the angle is zero? So this checks with what you would expect. The velocity and in gas, we have the converse with inverse case, right? So you can see here, B decays, rho is constant, and in the previous case, we have B is constant and rho is case. So this is a kind of uh, counter, contrary to it. So this is, uh, for a gas jet, we did experiments actually from, with some collaborators in Denmark Technical University. They provided us with the most detailed set that we have of uh, experiments. But uh, this is for a single phase uh, jet. We have plans that they will make uh, experiments for us for atomized jet, but this is a uh, little take time. And so it's not on time for this result, unfortunately. But uh, we'll add on, on due time. <laughs> So, uh, uh, continuing from this case, uh, we can actually, uh, by doing some manipulations um, and calculations, for example, calculating these momentum flux uh, at some distance, and also taking this, uh, mm, this is far field or inter large, large distance compared to the nozzle diameter, or you can think a very small nozzle at the, at the, at the original case by the Landau and Lichert case, they actually consider a point source of momentum, for example, and they derive this equation. So we reproduce the same experimental data fitting made by the same uh, authors in this case. But uh, it's made with the set of all their experiments that we have, that they have. It's not just a fit for this data. So they have our, uh, in this uh, results, they have many cases with varying temperatures, varying pressures, and they derive some uh, experimental fit, best fit, and this is uh, their their resulting equation, right, in this case. So, if you compare both, I think they are both so-so uh, in the intermediate or far field, but in the near field, uh, both are very quite off, I should say. So. This is also something that has been uh, remarked and that we are trying to uh, uh, improve. But I have the idea, uh, because I have seen many other experiments, that it could be a combination of that maybe the speed or the conditions right outside the nozzle are not where, the, where our assumptions are can be applied, which is that both phases are in equilibrium. So if this is not true, well, there can there should be some difference here in the near field. Uh, and the other thing is that uh, many, our model doesn't consider, but we see in many experimental results, effects of uh, compressibility or probably precipitation. So uh, that is to say that uh, 
So the easiest, the easiest way I can think that I will put an example later from our own experiments is that when gas uh, is combined, for example, with the liquid, uh, and it is highly pressurized and it comes out, it should be pressurized and it's scanned. So this, is, this can cause some acceleration, uh, initial acceleration, right outside the nozzle. So this can have an effect that is not considered, and this is why uh, I think this can be happening. So uh, in another case, I, will, I should mention this is the far field approximation, which is not that far in, in also for the far field, so if you think that you kind of get some constant value in an asymptote. And uh, but this is the near field uh, uh, gas and framing rate, the equation I showed you before. This is quite low, so this is not so good in this case. I, I wouldn't say what. But this is the most idealized version of the, the model. And the angle that we have here, I should also say that this is an optimization by uh, least squares that I did in, a, in, in some custom made program for this. And this is uh, the resulting angle is 3.1 degrees. And this is a little bit low for the experiment, for example, that uh, I have found, which were between 8 and maybe 16, at most 20. There's a great variation in the angle of the resulting. It also depends on how it's measured. There's not a single way to measure this angle. So it depends on the research, the researcher, on the how they report it. The angle can be different. So it's a little bit low, but still it's maybe within the range of what we could expect. So for the another case that I uh, have good data, good data. This is a water jet in air, and uh, from another author. Uh, I plot the same things as before, but in this case, uh, I use the same experimental curve from the other offers. And if I use the same curve, actually, uh, it was very bad. So the the, the fitting that the other uh, paper, the other result gives, it cannot be used for this other uh, uh, set of experiments. It was totally off. So what I had to do is to use the same fitting expression, but I'll also make my own optimization to adjust the parameter for their formula. And I got this was the best fit using their uh, power law. It was a power law fitting. So this was their best uh, fit for this other data, the test against data that they not considered in the first place. And with our uh, uh, model, with this other equation, once again, both can be equally good or equally off, maybe in the around in the far far field. And, but in the near field, intermediate far, but in the near field we have some um, discrepancy. So I will say the same. I think it's probably the same reason. This is why it's so important for me to have uh, more data, and uh, this is the main uh, criticism. And I agree totally. So far, that I, I mean, I'm interested in checking. Why, why this happens and, and what range of parameters this can be used in, right? And probably also I need to, uh, if I want to explain this this part, make some improvement of the model to include this effect. So the angle, for example, here is lower, 191. It's also a least worst optimized parameter. And the conditions are more or less new. So this is what are just in here. Okay, so now we got our own uh, uh, experiments with a single phase jet. This is an air jet, not two phase, not atomized. So uh, this is, well, just to say this was the uh, velocity distribution. This is the axial distance, and this is the uh, vertical distance of the jet. This was taken as an average, uh, 2,000 or so, by some um, later doctor. Um, I don't know. Something like this technique, and uh, but this is a measure, many measurements in average of the thing. So, uh, well, this is not so important. But this is the shape. This is uh, I want to stress here. This is the uh, uh, color map for of the near field. You can see this is dimensionless uh, axial distance. These are uh, nozzle diameters: two, three, four, five, six, right? So, and this is the also dimensionless vertical position. This is the axis, axis zero. So you can see here the velocity distribution. 
which is normalized by the Bernoulli um, theoretical exit velocity to be one. Uh, so you can see here that actually uh, the highest speed is not right outside the nozzle, but maybe one or two, maybe two, actually between two or three uh, nozzle diameters uh, up away from the nozzle exit. So this means that the that the fluid is accelerating after it comes out of the nozzle. And as I told you before, this is a pressure atom, uh, not atom, but pressure jet. Pressure jet, in this case, uh, only gas. So uh, my explanation here is that this is accelerating because it is expanding while it, when it comes out from a pressure to a deep pressure uh, angle. So this we cannot account for. So we can do, we, in our model, we actually fit from here on. And I define, I will define some virtual nozzle. So this is what I have to do to use this kind of data. And that is to say that after we neglect this effect, we can think that the jet is starts from here, and this actually fits very well, almost perfect. So this is something we have to deal with in some improvement. So, we did several things, like uh, uh, I proposed this cumulative momentum gradient. And this is to say, I measure the total amount of momentum per radius, right? Like 10% of the momentum is contained in a compass mark here. This is 25%. This line contains 25% of the total momentum of the jet. This is the distance. And this is the uh, also radial position dimension. This looks curved because this is a uh, logarithmic scale, but it's actually this is a straight line. So this is a cone. You can think of a cone and several angles. And this is uh, based on the experimental measurements. I actually fitted, uh, for example, this uh, Gaussian curves for each of the distances. And these Gaussian curves are the radial distribution for the velocity. From this, I get this uh, integrating the different 10% or 50% of the area, which relates to the total momentum. And why I did this? Well, to calculate this, uh, to calculate the angle, because there is no definition of the angle. So, uh, I this is actually some proposal of how to define the angle, and uh, for this kind of depth. Uh, in terms of this model, by using the momentum, uh, this is um, other authors use the speed. For example, the half speed. This is very common. If we have to talk the original one, so you measure the distance uh, where the velocity decays to half its power. It's very common in some other settings. But I propose this one, which is to say the 99% 99 uh, 99 of the total momentum is contained in this angle, which is. 10.82 10 degrees, actually. So this is looks good uh, with the experimental result that we have in other in other results. So this is I think this is a better way to define the angle and to uh, relate it to a physical or a more mm, yeah, physical quantity. So uh, this is what I have to do as I told you this uh, virtual nozzle. Uh, so this is the real nozzle and some distance. We define this virtual nozzle because we exclude this first part where we have this uh, expansion effect, acceleration effect, and also actually the, the Gaussian distributions are not a good fit because the distribution is very flat in this in this case. And we develop to some Gaussian here. I should mention that um, or um, my model here are one dimension, but actually uh, by using this uh, self-similarity, uh, which means that the profiles uh, are the same and just depends on the ratio between the radial and the axial distance. So we can calculate the whole radial uh, distribution by just uh, multiplying for this. So in this sense, although it's 1D, it can predict the, the radial distributions if we use this assumption. So this is the fit for after doing this uh, adjustments. For the velocity, and then this is distance, and this is the velocity, and you can see here the 
did this lot, or the marks are different experimental cases from for collaborators in Denmark for the different parts of the kit. And the these are there are three three model kits, and all three are given in this thesis. The first one is uh, with this cyan or green blue. It's uh, the Bernoulli. I call this is the ideal momentum jet with the theoretical velocity. This is velocity equal to one. So you can see that even if we put the theoretical velocity, it's not so far. And uh, the best one, uh, I optimize just for the angle. This is to say, if the model, I use the one important thing from the models is how many free parameters it has. So in this first case, I gave, gave the velocity as a fixed parameter from the physical quantum. This is the Bernoulli theoretical case. And the only free parameter was the angle. If I do this and optimize, so I get that this is the uh, best fit, this angle, 6.75. If I let both free, and I optimize in the space between the velocity and the angle, then I get this other curve, the red one, which is better, actually. But uh, it is interesting to see that the velocity is higher, but not so much higher, you know? Because you have, just keep in mind that this is a free space, right? So the, the, the best fit is still very close to the original Bernoulli uh, uh, predictive equation. And the last case, this green one, which is actually the best, it is almost perfect, you can see here. Uh, it has a lower angle, but it has three, three parameters. The angle, the velocity, the output velocity, and also this H, which is the half uh, energy half loss parameter. I'll, I'll introduce it later, but this is the numerical fit. And if this measures how much energy is being dissipated uh, with uh, as a function depending on the distance and the, and the velocity. This actually has the, the units of our viscosity. So you can think this is a maybe like a turbulent viscosity where some kinetic energy is being transformed into um, well, it's lost. So in this sense, this is energy loss and or power loss because the uh, the movement of the jet is being transformed into other kinds of energy, turbulence, and uh, all, all these are related. So this was very good. Uh, we're happy with this result, but uh, this is not enough. We need more data, of course. This is uh, maybe one term, and uh, but it looks at least uh, uh, in the range of some other uh, fields. I give, give here a summary of the three uh, models and the angles, which you can see that. Uh, well, they are a, li a little bit lower than the uh, experiment. Uh, here, this is the CMR, the cumulative momentum gradient. This is the quantity I proposed before. This is to say that at this at this angle, we have 96% of the total momentum. With this angle, we have 93, and with this angle, we have 80% of the total momentum. And um, so, as a conclusion from this, uh, we can recommend. That as a rough approximation, that the 95 radius is a, a pro, an appropriate angle to be used as a parameter in the current ideal momentum jet model. Why 95? Well, you can see about between these two, and it's a 99. <laughs> That's fine. That's because it's a rough approximation, so I can't say any detailed thing until I have a lot of data right? and maybe measure it better. But uh, just a rough approximation, this is what we can conclude. Uh, I was interested in saying, well, is there a limit angle, right? If we have the same CMRs, uh, if we take the 99%, 99.9, then 99.999, 99.9999, if we continue to uh, include almost all the momentum, will this tend to some limit value of the angle? So if there is this value, then we should use this, this angle, probably. But actually, it's not, not bound because we have the Gaussian distributions as a, uh, we use them. The Gaussian distributions continue even ever very small, but they continue to have some moment, momentum in the tail. So this is not bounded. And, uh, but we, I, I, I divide this, uh, mm, well, it's a 
you can face a print, a print function with this shape because it looks like this. So, and I optimize for this group. So I have also some, uh, if, you, if you want some empirical, or semi-empirical evaluation, that expression that can tell you the angle as a function of the total momentum. So this, this alpha, but this is alpha is the reciprocal. So this is the remainder of the momentum. So if, the, if, we, if this if the momentum is 95%, then alpha is 5%. So this is one contribution. So as a conclusion, the advantage is uh, it is analytical uh, the solution. It contains a single free parameter. And then we propose how to calculate the angle from the experiments. And we theoretically derive on a sound physical ground a new explicit formula for the gas impregnant rate defined by Hill. And this is the later definition. So in special cases of the model with constant approximations for the near and far field, the comparison with experimental data for atomizing jets shows reasonable agreement, but more data is needed. Like as I quoted several times, it's the most important. We also consider a liquid jet in a very thin atmosphere and a submerged jet, which are known cases. And we got theoretically speaking, this checks all it looks good. But uh, in practical terms, how much this is, we got good practical results, but we need to test it more. So, for the submerged jet, we derive state equations that agree with the classical results given by Landau and Lipschitz. We carried out our own experiments with turbulent air jets, showing excellent agreement with the centralized velocity decay in the intermediate and far field, not in the near field. We proposed how to determine the jet's angle introducing the concept of cumulative momentum right angle. So it's also some theoretical construct. Okay, this all. Oh, so this what I took a long time in this, but this is the main idea. The other ones I will go much more quickly. And uh, uh, the second model, this is an, an analytical implicit model. It is ideal atomizing power jet, I call it like this. Power, why power? Because this is an energy flux per unit time and energy per unit time is power. So this is a conservation of power. You can think that uh, in an Eulerian frame, this looks like uh, the rate of energy that's penetrating. And uh, I will not give the whole detail, but just think that it's the same as before, but measuring the energy flux instead of momentum flux. So we do kind of the same analysis we get uh, uh, some initial and later uh, energy flux power. And so we get an uh, equation for from the conservation of energy. And uh, from conservation of mass, we also get the uh, similar equation, of actually the same equation as before. And unfortunately, this time it's nonlinear, and we cannot have explicit uh, analytical solutions. But we can uh, uh, have, this is an implicit solution. How? Solving, solving the set of equations for the velocity and the density numerically. So if we do this, uh, we can also calculate the values. And uh, this is one, one approach. But this is it. <laughs> this is the second model. Okay. I, uh, the third model is the same as the last one. But now uh, we include energy and mass loss factors. Why? Because the total conservation of energy or 